Well, well, well. What have we here? Inside something, are we? A nice little white PCB. Rather ordinary. Aside from this little detail on the top. A tiny, minuscule little motor with a little weight attached. The weight is not balanced. Rather, it's off center. So when it rotates, this creates a rumble. This is in essence a haptic motor. Let's drop a tiny drop of oil here and give the board a cleaning with some isopropyl alcohol to make sure that it's clean and in working order. But let's put it back together. Slot it into place and tighten up the special 3.8 millimeter security screws and we have Pokemon Pinball. Design of Things Mini Pokemon Pinball or the Game Boy Rumble Pack. I scored this for less than a dollar as when I bought it some of the features weren't working. So that cleaning and oiling we just did, well that fixed those problems. I never thought it would really be worthy of a video, but here we are. Why? My love of pinball? Probably not. Well, to be honest, I spent more time than I would like to admit on the 3D pinball for Windows that was bundled with Windows XP. That aside, the real reason I love this cartridge, the rumble, the haptic feedback is so good that it brings tactility, the feeling of actually playing pinball to the game. So let's pop in the battery. But before we plug her into the Game Boy, let's pause for a second to look at the design of the outside. This is in fact the standard design of a Nintendo Rumble Pack cartridge for the Game Boy. In this case though, it's bright yellow, the infamous color of Pikachu, really standing out. The body is quite an odd shape, which is mostly utilitarian to house the battery. But it slopes down towards the top in this wedge shape, a shape that creates a flat face to put the label on. The label has a similar surface area to the Game Boy Advance label. However, it's a bit wider and shorter. Featuring the name and some cute artwork of Pikachu looking up and out of the frame. In the top corner of the label, we can see that this is a Game Boy and Game Boy Color compatible piece of software. The same functionality as a ordinary black cartridge like this. That is compatible with color and older Game Boy models. I'll show you how this looks on an original Game Boy later. Finally, there is a rumble bulge on the back. When we look at the side profile, it looks like a futuristic concept car. Or maybe a vacuum head if you prefer. Let's slot it in to see why I love it so much. Open the menu, choose one of two tables, and boom, we're in the game. Let's move the mic close so you can hear, if not feel, the rumble. Oh yeah, beautiful haptics. It really makes it feel like a real physical pinball table. Trust me. As the ball hits the bumpers, I feel it, making the ball itself feel like it is a physical object rather than a collection of pixels. In a small way, this tricks my brain into thinking that I am in the arcade on a physical table, even though I'm just holding this in my hands. This isn't the only game to use this Rumble Pack cartridge design. There were 16 games released in the US, but it may be one of the best uses. It adds another dimension to the game, one that makes it something special and worth playing. Honestly, I never would have given this game a second glance if not for this. In 1998, this was revolutionary. The first Rumble Pack for any game controller was launched in 1997, one year before, 
with the game Star Fox 64. Then we got this, the first rumble for a handheld system. With the Game Boy's physical buttons and the addition of rumble, gameplay is truly a tactile, hands-on experience. I'll never really get into gaming on a smartphone, as it is in its base form the complete opposite of this wonderful experience. Until next time on Design of Things.